Cube News and Analysis from Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Actian, Accelerating Big Data 2.0, and WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back, everyone, to Day 2 Wrap-Up. This is Big Data SV, Big Data Silicon Valley, the hashtag Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net slash big data SV where all the action is. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We're live in Santa Clara, California, Hilton, right across the street from the Santa Clara Convention Center where Strata Conference is taking place. We are eyes and ears all over Strata, covering like a blanket. Our live coverage here at the Big Data event here at the Hilton. Amazon's here, the Big Data party tonight, a lot of events, MapR. Big action happening at the Hilton, Big Data SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and Jeff Kelly, senior analyst at Wikibon on Big Data. Guys, wrap up here, just to summarize day two, we got one more day tomorrow, um, is more of the same for Strata. I mean, we're seeing you know, a sellout, we're seeing um, every slot filled, keynotes. They went from, I think, 10 minutes to five minutes to get more keynotes in. Um, so rapid fire of speakers. Um, their format's changing a little bit, but still, you know, they're selling out the tickets, all the sponsors are sold, new startups, um, and, and, and packed house for Strata Conference. Here in Silicon Valley, we're covering the innovation, we're covering, going the extra mile, covering the startups, uh, got the analysis, but it's all about Hadoop meets big data analytics, big announcements, and you're starting to see, Dave, the vendors finding their groove. The, the, the ground settling, you're seeing the different Hadoop players, Cloudera, Hortonworks, MapR, finding their swim lanes. Peace, the, the three families are having peace among themselves, right? You know, different approaches. So, what's your take? So, for, so first of all, yes, Strata is sold out. We were over there last night and everything is sold. I mean, we're talking about the spaces on the carpet are being sold as advertisements. So, uh, it's, a, it's a very good BD event when you talk to people here. They said that you know, they're sort of getting lost in, I mean, the customers are sort of getting lost in the business development that's going on, but it's a good BD event. Um, whereas in the early days of Strata, it was a big data science event. So that's sort of evolved. I think the other thing is, as you said, John, you're seeing real traction, especially from sort of the big three distro vendors. They're not only evolving their business model like Cloudera, continue to tune it, fine tune it, and so forth, but MapR, Cloudera, and Hortonworks, all three of them are doing business. This is a, a big beach and they each got their corner of the beach or their you know, strip of sand on the beach, it's a sunny day, and, um, and they're doing business, and you're gonna see some you know, IPOs come out of this. You, know, you certainly already have with guys like Splunk and, 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 and Tableau, you can, I think I would put them in a, into a big data adjacent category, uh, but, but some of the core Hadoop vendors are gonna be going public soon, which is great because then we'll start to get some real visibility on Jeff Kelly's numbers. <laughs> so I look, I look forward to the IPOs to validate my numbers. <laughs> no, but we also talk about some people dropping out and maybe tapping out, but all growing or consolidating in an ecosystem. So Jeff, I want to ask you the question: two things. One, the fifty billion dollar market number. You're targeting that number. Mm -hmm. One, and the other question is. How does the market look from a formation standpoint? Are things settling? Is it still dynamic? What's your take? Well, certainly, there's, there's, there's still, things are still dynamic, but they are starting to take shape. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier today, I think what we're going to see a lot more this year, and, and we've seen it this week here at Strata and Big Data SV, is we're going to see a lot more partnership news and, and integration-related news and reseller ag arrangements between these different uh, ecosystem partners, because it very much is an ecosystem. Uh, Big Data's got a lot of, a lot of different parts um, it's not one thing, it's not just Hadoop, it's not just analytics, uh, there's data integration, there's <coughs> security, there's all different components to this. And really, um, with the exception of a couple of the, I, I guess, mega vendors, there's no one company that's got the complete platform. Um, so you're going to continue to see partnerships, and I think that's uh, an important um, evolution of this market, because it's clearly showing that the technology now is solid enough where uh, these companies are ready to start integrating, getting out into the, into the field and actually uh, deploying this stuff in, in production. And also you're starting to see the partnerships. So guys, big news to me, the big game changing um, sentiment that I'm feeling also through the announcements and news is one, Hortonworks announcement with Red Hat, mm -hmm. their relationship with Microsoft. Um, the Red Hat news is an expanded partnership that's significant, that validates and puts an exclamation point on their strategy. 
You're seeing uh, Cloudera with the Enterprise Hub go in that direction. And then recently we had on theCUBE today, we had two entrepreneurs turned CEOs, if you will, and, oh, in this case, Collins and more of a general manager, uh, HP and the, and the MapR deal, Dave. I mean, that's very interesting. And that's, that could be the big dark horse in, in this entire show is that the MapR, John Schroeder, he's no dummy. He knows this business, he's an entrepreneur. He's, he can see that relationship. HP needs a dance partner. Not a bad fit, Dave. So let's talk about uh, the big three. So you talk about MapR and NHP. I think you're right on, John. And you were asking uh, uh, John Schroeder really good questions. Like, are you afraid you're going to get lost inside of the HP machine? And you know that speaking from experience. But I think he had lost. He, <laughs> 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 yeah, you did. You had to get lost. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's it's sometimes hard to navigate. But he was very confident. Now, in the case of HortonWorks, you're right. The Red Hat deal is a big deal because the significance of that is. Hortonworks has now knocked down the two big operating systems, Microsoft with Windows and Red Hat with Linux. So that, they've locked in as partners those two companies. For Cloudera's uh, uh, point of view, what I learned here this week is that Cloudera is getting traction with some of the big SIs like Accenture and Deloitte and Ernie Young and Capgemini. And that's how companies like Cloudera are going to be able to compete with the likes of IBM, who has deep domain expertise and can compete with those companies that I mentioned, like Accenture. And so Cloudera, I think, has an advantage there in terms of they were the first to market and they're leading a lot of the trends. So a lot of the, the SIs know who they are and, and are willing to work with them. Uh, that's a good point. I think from Hortonworks' point of view, I mean, they're, you know, give them a lot of credit. Their strategy has not changed one iota. It's remain open and use that openness to leverage partnerships and reseller arrangements to get, uh, you know, as, uh, get mass adoption in the, in the enterprise. Um, from Cloudera's perspective, I would just echo what you just said. Um, you know, if they're going to try to compete with IBM, which is their you know, stated goal, they need the services partners. Um, and, and the services partners, the extensions of the world, they're competing with IBM as well. They need a partner. They need a dance partner. And this kind of uh, relates to what I said earlier about this is an ecosystem play. Um, there's not one, you know, technology or one service that kind of covers it all. It's uh, many moving parts. So, um, again, we're going to continue to see those kind of partnerships. But, you know, I think on the, on the one hand, we're going to see all three of those companies can succeed and do well. The market's big enough for that. Uh, but I still think, look, this, there's still going to be some, they're still going to fight it out. This is not, uh, I don't think they're playing nice. Uh, maybe I think we might disagree a little bit on that, John. I think um, it's still, I think it's still a pretty heated competition. Uh, there's room for them all to succeed. But uh, well, don't get it. I mean, they, they want to be going. There's still obviously skirmishes in the open source community. There always will be. That's just the way it is. But I think, from a fundamental business model standpoint, I think, you know, it's a nice position here. I think it's all kind of there's a balance of power there. They're all got their now. There may be some cognitive dissonance around their decisions. I mean, some may like the other guy's position better. The other. That's just the race. Mm -hmm. Certainly, that that doesn't appear to be the case right now. I think right now they're all kind of in enough separation in terms of competitiveness where I think they're fine. I think it's comfortably numb for them right now with, with respect to kind of where they're going. I mean, Cloudera are clearly going after the enterprise. I mean, they basically changed their pricing, Dave, to accelerate the sales inhibitor or calls saying, are you in bucket A, B, or C? And then if you're flagship, we go right to outcome discussions, which is essentially a long sales cycle, but lucrative if they can penetrate. So to me, that's a risk on Cloudera. If they can penetrate those sales cycles, they're going to win. So I don't know the distribution of their sales, but you know my guess is mostly mid-range, but we'll see. Well, I think the two, the Cloudera repricing was all about, I mean, first of all, it was too complicated. The transaction model was too, too, too expensive for them because they're, I'm sure they're going back and forth with people. That was one of those deals that at some point early on in the cycle, somebody said, hey, we can optimize revenues if we sell each of these little piece parts you know, as, as, as little bites. And then over time they realized, well, it just got too complicated. Um, and why don't we just bundle them all together and then focus on adoption and not worrying about, okay, negotiating each little piece part. Um, I also want to add, uh, talk about Pivotal. So Pivotal all of a sudden took the Misfit toy, EMC, VMware, took the Misfit toys, threw them in the Pivotal bucket, and all of a sudden, boom, you got a $300 mil a million dollar company, a leader in big data overnight. Uh, you know, with, with the data lake marketing, that's sort of Pivotal's deal, it, you know, EMC, VMware, good marketing, Pivotal has now joined that fray. And so they're out pushing, you know, their messaging, and they're doing business, they're doing business because they got relationships, they got partnerships, and it's, it's kind of the EMC federation, the EMC mafia, they know how to do business. Uh, and so they're sort of just, you know, almost forcing themselves on the world, and, and they're going to get some 
production out of that. Uh, the other one is IBM. IBM's a, a leader in this space. They went from, some, from nowhere, not even in the discussion, to number one. And you've quantified that. Uh, and, and number one in a substantive way, there's a lot of action in services. You know, we heard a lot of discussion about that. 40% of the business in, in your revenue report is, comes from services. IBM's the number one services company out there. And they are just, again, doing a lot of business in this space. And people can criticize IBM and say, oh, they're you know, sort of old school and not modern architecture, blah, 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 blah. IBM's about doing business. Yeah. You know, so you know, those are two other companies that at different ends of the spectrum, but they're players. Guys, what do you guys expect now? What's the game-changing uh, take here, day two, and summarize? And tomorrow's going to be kind of a, a heavy day for us, but mostly Friends of the Cube. We'll extract some more signal, but I think right now we've got a good feeling of the show, Dave. Uh, you can always, day two is really kind of where you get the meat on the bone in terms of the vibe. What's your take? Let's go out on a limb and say, what is the game-changing moment right here, this moment, for big data? Well, the, the, the missing moment is apps. Where are all the big data apps? Um, we've been talking about that for a long time. Jeff, a couple years ago, you predicted this is going to be the year of the apps. Mike Olson predicted that. Never happened. Why is that? Because the infrastructure and the ecosystem has to mature. That's happening, but it's happening very slowly. I can't wait to hear what Abhi Mehta has to say, because there is a company that's actually developing the big data apps. So <laughs> I'm excited about that to hear what he has to say. But so. I don't, I'm, 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 I'm still squinting for that game-changing moment, John, but, but I'll, I'll bet you you have a sense of what that might be. What do you think? Well, I mean, I look at the startups in Silicon Valley as a, as a good barometer of how the, I call the, the, the patch of innovation, you know, where the mushrooms grow, the, the manure of innovations, money, ideas, and, 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 and just, just seeding and fertilizing all the innovation. That, to me, that's a bellwether. Then you look at the financing market, Dave, and you look at what the, what the rounds are going for, A, B, financing, Series A, Series B, then ultimately what the M&A market looks like, and then the IPO, it's the latter of how I benchmark it. And right now, valuations are very high. Uh, the startups, I'm not impressed with the startup situation. I'm really not, I gotta say. It's like looking at the startups, not as much advanced thinking in big data as I would expect some folks to have. A lot of gimmicky uh, apps uh, out there, uh, on the consumer side, but I haven't yet seen the game-changing enterprise. What about Clear Story? I like Clear Story. I think the idea of what Charmilla's working on is great. See, the, this, is, this is a great example. You look at Charmilla at Clear Story. That's a hard problem, and it's not easy to simplify the knowledge worker, and they're doing a great job to make visualization and analytics work. But again, I want to see more startups solving real computer science problems. That's why I like what Spark's doing. I like some of the computer science engineering stuff happening at Stanford and also at Berkeley. To me, I think a whole other crop of innovation is going to come out of that wave. I have yet to see the startups on the other side. There's some good stuff being funded. We know Platform, Continuity, guys we know. Those are real guys with chops, but I just don't see a lot more uh, guys. And when I walk through the show at, uh, over there at Strata, there's not a lot of names. I'm not, I'm not shaking my head going, wow, that's kick ass. I'm not, I'm not blown away at all. I don't fall out of my chair. So to me, that's a real indicator. Yeah, I think you know, when it comes to apps, look, we're, I think we were a little premature in predicting the year of uh, big data applications. Um, and part of that is related to the underlying infrastructure. And there's still room uh, for improvement among, uh, in terms of making Hadoop uh, rock solid for the enterprise. Made, made a lot of uh, progress, but and this is a very fast moving market, but it's still going to take time. Um, you know, these things don't happen overnight. These are hard problems people are trying to solve. The analytics, the complexity of these analytic problems that people are trying to solve yeah, and so the, is so challenging. So and to, the, to deliver that into an actual end, using, end user polished application takes time. Let me finish my thought too on that because the startups is one, one area, but when you look at the other ones, the established valuations of the, of the companies, like Cloudera, like these big analytics uh, 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 ventures, the valuations, Dave, are very high. Jeff, when you look at the numbers, they're almost, you know, they're betting on the ranch. You got the big VCs betting against it. So if the M&A market doesn't develop between two to 700 million in terms of acquisition, then that's going to be an opportunity for the ecosystem. So what I'm watching is startups, the valuations of these, these well-funded Series C, C, Series D financings, growth firms, quote, growth firms, they have to produce revenue. Mm. The value on that is, are they going to produce the cash to support the valuations that get them on an IPO track or a big acquisition number. Right, I think, well this is the year um, companies like Clutter, to, they need to turn up the, the, the revenue machine. It needs to happen this year. Um, Impressive what, uh, what Alan has laid out in terms of messaging. I got to give Cloudera a major props on that. Very tight, very clean positioning and the messaging is great. Yeah, uh, but again, the, the, you know, when we're back here this time next year, uh, those revenue numbers need to be, you know, uh, uh, Cloudera's got to hit 100 million this year, that's the goal. Okay, final word, Dave, final sound bite, bumper sticker here, day two. 
My bumper sticker, it's all about the wallets. We've gone from uh, geek to wallet. That's what's uh, happened in the big data world. Jeff? I'd say uh, bumper sticker is uh, open for business. To me, show me the money, justify the valuations, and let's see the startups. I think it's going to be still innovation, ton of growth, a lot of opportunity. That's a wrap from day two here at theCUBE. Big Data SV, that's our hashtag, hashtag Big Data SV. That's our event, Big Data NYC, was a few months ago. We'll be back in New York in a few more short months. Big Data NYC, Big Data SV, Innovation Silicon Valley. We'll be right back for day three tomorrow. Stay tuned and keep watching.